Again, when we analyze XCD, we talk about sign and value. Now, if the sign is positive, it means that when the price of B increases, the demand of B increases. So let's visualize this. If the price of Nike increases, would there be more or less people buying Nike? Less. These people will go buy Adidas, which is, we hasn't changed its price at all. The demand of Adidas increases, and this only happens because Adidas is a substitute for Nike. They both sell shoes. So when the sign is positive, the two goods are substitutes. Now you must be thinking, then if the sign is negative, what happens? Well, let's say the, when the price of printer decreases, what will happen to the demand of ink cartridges? Well, more people buy printers when the price of printer decreases, then they need more ink cartridges. So the demand of cartridges increases. So the demand of cartridges moves in the opposite direction as the price of printers. Price drops, the price of printers drops, demand for printers increase, quantity demand of printers increase, and the demand for cartridges increase. And they are called complements because uh, you buy the both together, they complement each other. So now let's look, at, let's look at the value of XCD. If the value is between 0 and 1, it means that the relationship is weak. For example, in the case of a substitute, let's look at a familiar example, Xbox and PlayStations. Enthusiasts, they tell me that there's actually quite a bit of difference between the two. So let's assume that there is actually quite a difference between the two. So either way, game CDs make for Xbox can be used for PlayStation. So when the price of Xboxes increase, there might be an increase in the demand for PlayStations, but not too significantly because um, due to the differences, you know, there's Kinect for Xbox and there's some other lame Windows feature. So the demand for Xboxes will not increase more than proportionately. Hence, the value is somewhere between, you know, somewhere around 0 0.5. Let's take another example. Let's say that we are talking about Coke and Pepsi. Very minute differences, they almost taste the same. So if the price of cola decreases, then the demand for Pepsi will decrease because the price of cola decreases, demand, quantity demand for cola increases, and the demand for Pepsi will, uh, will decrease because more people are buying Coke. Then, uh, and they'll decrease more than proportionally because they are substitutes. In this case, the XED will be probably be more than one. In the case of complements, the same thing applies. Weak complements like oil and car because you won't just buy a car because of a drop in the price of oil, but there's still a certain amount of influence. So strong complements are like razors and shavers. Try and think of our own examples. It's always, it's always good to have one example each for weak complements, strong complements, weak substitutes, and strong substitutes. So if the XED is zero, what does that mean? Well, it just means that the demand, uh, the price of one good and the demand for the other good doesn't change at all. For example, uh, if the price of shoes increase, what happens to the demand of TVs? Well, are you asking me WTF? Yes, it simply means that the goods are not related at all. So they have an XED of zero. When the price of shoes increase, the demand of TVs just stay the same.